Hello Twin Flames, thank you so much for being here. Right, let's get straight back into the questions then on this weekend of knowledge. So the angels are saying then on this, this question that I need to really tune in. So let me just ask the angels right now. Thank you angels for being with me and everybody watching right now. Thank you for guiding me and helping me to channel exactly what you want me to say so that these amazing people know the truth. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you for helping me to speak your truth through me. Thank you, thank you, thank you and so it is. Okay, they just asked me to do that because this question could create triggers because it's just closed throat chakra up there. The question is to do with soulmates. Is it okay to have a soulmate while I'm waiting on my twin? Now, this is going to cause a bit of controversy because, you know, I know a lot of people disagree with this, but the angels are saying it's entirely optional. It's up to you. It's how you feel. If you feel that you need a soulmate in your life right now to give you what you need on the 3D, then that is exactly the right thing to do. It doesn't mean you're disrespecting your twin. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong towards the connection. It just means that you have needs and wants and requirements that need filling right now and your twin isn't capable of giving you that. But a soulmate can come in and give you everything right now that you need while you're waiting on this journey. And while you're in that soulmate connection, it will teach you what you need as well because sometimes soulmates are sent in when we need to learn specific life lessons either before we meet our twin or before our twin is ready to be in union so the angels are saying you're not doing anything wrong don't let anybody tell you different you may choose the path where you were waiting you were happy being you you are embracing your independence that's what i'm doing you know but other people are different. Not everybody's the same. So do not judge anyone or the decisions that they make. The angels are very clear about that. So the angels are saying, yes, it's okay to have a soulmate as long as that soulmate is treating you right and not mistreating you in any way. If any person is mistreating you, the angels are saying you have to get the strength to leave them in the past because you were valuable and you were strong and amazing and you deserve the world. So while you're waiting for your twin, there's two paths you can take, the path of independence and being single or the path of being with another. And if you embrace that being with another, then that person person will be teaching you valuable life lessons that you need on this journey so before you judge anybody who's with a soulmate when they've got a twin flame there you know you've got no right to because they may be learning valuable life lessons that they've agreed to or the creator wants them to learn okay and it's just like the karmic partner if your masculine is with a karmic partner, that person is a soul teacher to them, teaching them things that you can't right now. So again, there's a reason behind everything. You have to look through the situation. So let's get a card then. So angels, what can you tell us please about soulmates, being with a soulmate or learning from a soulmate? There you go. It's about acceptance. Acceptance. So accept the journey. And a lot of people you know, decide to live with a soulmate because they accept that their twin isn't ready right now. They accept that this is the way it is right now. And if you need something more on this journey, then accept that and embrace whatever it is. I hope that answers the questions. I hope it doesn't trigger anyone, but the angels are telling you the absolute truth. Whew. Okay. Next question. How do I deal when my twin isn't open spiritually? What does it mean for our union? Okay. How do I deal? Well, how you deal is you have to surrender and you have to let go. Because if you try and force your twin to open up before they're ready, then you'll push them further away. And I'm guilty of this. I did this the first time. I was trying to make him realise. It's like I was trying to shake him awake. And he wasn't ready. So he listened for a little bit and then it just all overwhelmed him and he just pushed me away. And that's what happens. So the angels are saying, if your twin isn't open spiritually, it doesn't really mean anything for your union, anything, you know, dramatic or symbolic for your union because it's the way the union is. You know, usually it's like very rare if it doesn't happen like this, but usually one twin's awake and one twin's closed off. Or one twin's awake, the other twin's slightly awake and then closes off. You know, this is how it happens. So 
all it means is that you're doing something right because you're if you're about to go into separation because usually you'll find that everything's good and then one of the twins usually the feminine will want the masculine to wake up so it'll be like shaking them awake and then you push them so much you go into separation and that's usually what happens so the angels are saying it doesn't mean anything for your union it doesn't mean they aren't um your masculine or you know they're not going to wake up or anything like that it just means that they aren't yet ready to face up to things already within them that they already know so you just have to be patient on this journey how do I deal when my twin isn't open spiritually? How do I deal? How do I deal when my twin isn't open spiritually? They're throwing them on the floor. So, wow. So what we've got then, so we've just had acceptance card and now we've got self-acceptance. So the angels are saying when your twin isn't open spiritually, you have to accept that and work on self. Okay, you have to accept that and work on self and stay in your peace energy. So work on self-love, self-worth, self-healing and try and stay in a peace energy, in a calm energy. Serenity is needed. So it's about creating calmness within you. So that's how you deal. Okay, okay. what do you do when you're not really sure about the signs how do you ask and receive signs properly and what if you don't believe? Well, that's all connected. So what do you do when you're not really sure about the signs? If you're asking for signs and it says, how do you ask and receive signs? All you do is say, thank you, angels, for being with me. Thank you for showing me clear signs right now that he is my twin flame, that she is my twin flame. Please guide me. Is this person, say the name, is this person my twin flame? What do I need to know? Am I on the right path? Show me, show me, show me. Clearly guide me. Show me in ways I will physically understand. That's how I ask for signs. I'm very clear with the universe. I don't make it wishy-washy. And the angels are saying, how do you ask and receive signs? You ask in that way, very clearly, and then you open yourself up to seeing them. And the angels will show you repetitive signs. It will be repetitive guidance over and over and over again. Very, very clear. And then he says, what do you do when you're not really sure about the signs? You ask again, again and again and again. And someone messaged me and said, I've received mixed signals. If you're receiving mixed signals, it's because you're mixing up your questions. Get very clear. Ask one question at a time. Is that person my twin flame? Show me a huge sign today that I know that this person is my twin flame right now. Okay, that's how clear you have to be. You have to speak that clear. And Archangel Michael gives you the power to speak that way. A lot of strength coming in there. And if you don't believe, then you have to keep asking for signs until you do believe. And the angels are saying they've been showing us right now on every single video that I've been doing lately, they're giving us signs, signs that your masculine is thinking of you, signs that this is a true twin flame dynamic, signs that, you know, the spring awakening is coming in. They're giving you signs. You just have to be open to them. So angels, what do we do about signs? Okay, let me just shuffle them again. What? Okay. I'm using the unicorn cards. Cycles. They're showing here cycles. Things come into cycles. So, you know, you have to know that timing is the key. You know, timing is the key. Trust in what you're being shown. It says everything has its right time. Everything. So what they're the same with this one is that if you're asking for a sign then you have to allow the angels time to sync things up because sometimes you'll be shown a sign straight away and other times they're syncing something up and it might take a day or two. So, you know, everything happens in cycles. You have to just have a bit of patience on this and strength is needed. Strength. And this is amazing because we've just actually had this card come out in the reading I did for the weekend for the masculines. But, you know, this is saying that strength is needed. You need to have strength on this journey and trust in the signs you're being given because they are being shown to you in miraculous ways. OK, in miraculous ways. Right. Whew. Can twins disagree on religion, relationships, etc? What if we are from different worlds? How can I cope with that? Should I leave him as he is? Okay. So yes, obviously there's going to be differences because that's what pushes you into separation. It's things that trigger things. That's why there's huge age gaps, religious differences, 
background differences, all kinds of things are in the way in this connection because, you know, the twins have to realise in their own way that they are meant for each other and that it does not matter what society says. It's all to do with what society says. If you're disagreeing on something, it's because of the way you've been brought up. It's about core values, core beliefs. And, you know, there can be clashes there. And if you're clashing, and you might feel like you're from different worlds, if you're in different parts of the world, if you're in different ages, if you're in different religions, different sexes, all kinds of things get in the way. It's all pretty much the same. And what you are learning is that love conquers all. That love conquers all. It doesn't matter. It's only when, you know, it's only what people think that creates a barrier. So, for example, an age gap. Someone's asked me about age gaps. Oh, I've got it here, okay? Because it's pretty much the same thing. We've got, can twins disagree on religion, etc.? And then we've got age gaps, any special lessons with a big age gap. These are pretty much the same. The lessons are the same, even though they come across in different ways. The lesson is that you have to let go of what you think it should be like or what, you, what society says it should be like. For example, there's a huge age gap between me and my twin flame. He's younger than me. And he thinks that, oh, he should be with someone his own age, someone like this, someone like that. And anything different is wrong. It's wrong, it's weird, it's not right. That's and he won't move away from that, you know. That was when we went into separation the first time, that was the way he thought about things. I'm sure as he's getting older, he's changing, you know, but that's a big thing. So, you know, this this other question says age gaps, any special lessons with a big age gap? It's the same. The special lessons are all the same, you know. The lessons are that you need to realise that it doesn't matter what society says. Love conquers all. And that's what the angels are saying, okay. So if you're coming from different worlds, if you feel like there's big massive gaps between you, then you just have to kind of breathe, release, let go and allow your twin to do their work on their own because they will realise in time that that's all hogwash. I love how the angels give me the word hogwash when Liz, the ego Liz, is about to use a swear word. The angels say hogwash. That's the word. I love it. So, you know... Can you give us a, a, a card, please, angels, to do with any big gaps? The angel's saying, listen to music. You'll be given signs and music. Music holds the key. They're saying, music. <laughs> okay, right, what they're saying is, any gaps, anything is brought together by the power of music. How amazing is that? It's like universal music heals everything. Music heals everything. And remember... You know, for example, if you've got two people, one can speak English and one can't, you can understand each other through the power of music. So the same music helps. Music will help on this journey, you know. Just release, let go and listen to some music and set your intention. The intention, make your intention known clearly that you love your twin no matter what. Set your intention, feminines. This is goddess energy, feminines. You know, as long as you set your intention right and they know the truth, then, you know, there's nothing more you can do. You just have to let them get on with it, you know. He says, should I love him as he is? Of course you should. Just love him as he is and allow him to do his work because eventually the masculines will realise that love conquers all and it doesn't matter any, what anybody thinks, you know, society, it doesn't matter. And, the, you know, the, the question underneath this, it all interlinks again. Why are masculines so messed up, not believing in their natural strength? Again, it's because they trust too much in the 3D reality that they can see. So that's why they're so messed up, because, you know, all of a sudden they've got a connection with someone that throws all of their beliefs out, and it's scary, so they feel messed up. So that's why they come across as messed up. King Trident's tribe, Matt, he calls them jokers. They're not in king energy when they're doing this. They're in joker energy. And jokers aren't worthy of a queen. You were their queen, so you mess them up. You mess up their head because all these things are coming in to heal them and learn them for soul growth. It's all about soul growth. And the reason that they don't believe in their natural strength until they awaken is because they feel unworthy. 
and they are very afraid, they're scared of abandonment and loss and they need to heal things from their childhood and really they feel like little children, you know, little children that need um, direction and love and nurturing and you have to be the bigger picture, you have to be the bigger, the bigger person and shine your light no matter what. I hope that answers the question, amazing. And we've got another one here. They're all interlinking our age gaps. Will we reach union or not supposed to in this lifetime? Again, the question is, will you come together in this lifetime? The angels will not waver. They say it's inevitable if you're doing your work. If you're doing your work and your masculine's doing your work, it's inevitable. But, you know, you just don't know. You don't know unless you're doing your work. You have to leave it to the divine. Age gaps, will we reach union? You've got to do your work. And the work is allowing, you know, your twin the space to realise on his own that love conquers all. And you have to realise that love conquers all. You know, I, I remember saying to my twin, because I couldn't get my head around it at first, because I always thought if I met my twin flame, I'd be the younger one, you know. And because I was the older one, it freaked me right out, which is obviously what was going to happen because they're not going to give us an easy task, are they, you know? They're going to give you something that's going to touch your buttons and test your soul, you know? So I was the older one, well, I am the older one, and, you know, it freaked me out because then I thought, well, why am I, why am I attracted to a younger person, somebody who I've got, you know, really no, nothing in common with in the way as somebody my own age and you know it gave me a lot of tests as well and it's still testing me now and that's the whole point releasing and knowing that age is just a number and that love conquers all i hope that helps right can a clairvoyant see a twin flame co connection predictions how do they work well Obviously, if somebody's operating from a place of love and light, they will always give you correct, genuine guidance. If somebody is giving you um, nasty predictions or, you know, it's very dark what they're saying, then they're not coming from a place of love. And you'll always know because you'll feel it, you'll resonate with it. And someone messaged me and said, can a clairvoyant see a twin flame connection? Somebody who's operating from a place of love and light can see that connection. The angels assure me of that. But the angels are saying that you don't need a clairvoyant to confirm your twin flame union because you can ask the angels and they will give you the signs themselves. So if you want to know if your connection is real, then ask the angels and they will confirm that to you. But if you're watching this and you want a real genuine reader to confirm it for you, then, you know, go for a personal reading with someone operating from a place of love. That's all I can say. And it says predictions, how do they work? Well, this is, is funny because what you've got to remember is, you know, as a reader myself, we do readings and if some things don't happen the way that we predict them to happen, the reason why, it's nothing to do with the reading being off, it's because everybody's got free will. So you may not go down that path that's been offered to you. You may make a change that takes you down the wrong, the, the other direction. My twin used to say that to me, you know, I'd say, this is going to happen if you do this. But he'd say, well, that didn't happen and do it. And it's because he was creating his own blocks, you know. And then he'd say, well, this stuff isn't real. And I think you're just sabotaging your own life yourself, you know, because the people put blocks in the way. Everybody's got free will. So that's how predictions work. Wow. Explain Abraham Hicks. So somebody said to me, you believe in Abraham Hicks, Liz. How does that work when Abraham doesn't believe in twin flames? Well, I take what resonates with me and I urge you all to do the same. If something resonates with you, you'll feel it. If something doesn't, it'll feel off. You know, you'll just feel off. And Abraham Hicks is channeled through Esther Hicks. Esther Hicks is a lovely lady and she channels Abraham, and Abraham is infinite intelligence, just the way like that I channel the angels, but she does it in a very clear, concise way, where Abraham will take over a physical body and speak through her completely, so Esther is there, I mean, sometimes, well, most of the time, when I'm doing angel readings, and I do, when I'm doing a reading for you guys, I'll do the reading, and I don't know what I'm talking about, 
until I watch the reading back. And most of the time, like 95% of the time, I don't watch the readings back. I just post them straight away on YouTube and then I'll watch them later if I get the chance because I know it's genuine guidance. I don't need to filter anything. I don't need to go in and change anything. It's coming directly from heaven. And that's how Esther channels Abraham. So Abraham speaks through um, what's going on, you know, in the universe, and you take what resonates with you, you know, because at the end of the day, nobody knows what's going on with a person, you, you know, she could be channeling anybody, I could be channeling anybody, it's what resonates with you, so you take what resonates with you, so my answer to what do I think about Abraham not believing in twin flames, then I just feel that, you know, Abraham has, has obviously, you know, got no um, conscious information coming through about twin flames, whereas I have. That's the only thing I can say. So I hope that kind of explains it, but take what resonates and, and ignore what doesn't because I love listening to Abraham Hicks. Very, very positive, inspiring. I've got a lot of Abraham stuff on my playlist and, you know, it builds me up. I do Abraham Vortex meditation every single morning because it raises up my vibration. But some things don't resonate with me like the way that Abraham speaks about Jesus and things like that, you know. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. I hope that makes sense. Right. Did I scare my twin mentioning numerology patterns? Probably, okay. The angels are saying probably. They're not saying yes or no because it's a probably. In other words, part of it will have scared them and part of it will have fascinated them, okay? It was like half and half because... You know, masculines are fascinated by this information, but it absolutely scares them to death. And that's why they run. So if you've mentioned something to your twin and they've kind of shut down a little bit, that's why. Because obviously you've mentioned something that, yes, it fascinates them and they know is real, but they're very, very afraid of it. And that's because they're afraid of the connection. So, you know, don't be surprised if, if you mention things, it's, it's a lot like I spoke about before, where you're trying to wake them up and shake them awake and they're not ready. So they'll take it to some, you know, for a little while and then they just block everything out. And that's usually when separation occurs. I hope that helps. Um, how do we keep the faith that union is meant to be? Well, it's very obvious what we do. We call on angels and ask for signs because we all question this journey at some point. We all do, no matter how long we've been on the journey or how t tapped in and tuned in we are. We all question the journey. I do it, you do it, you know. And the only way to keep the faith is by asking something bigger than you for signs. So, you know, when you're a divine feminine, you get your power from heaven. You get your power from the universe. That's what fills your cup up. The masculines get their power and their strength from your light, but you get it from heaven. So how do we keep the faith that union is meant to be? The angels are saying, ask for signs ask for clear signs and they will be shown to you and we've spoke about that before wow can twin flames be earth angels connected to the mission yes earth angels as in light workers not as actual angels walking around but you can be seen as earth angels people that help others people call me an angel people you know i know you call me a pixie but people in real life call me an angel all the time you know because they say wow you're an earth angel because i shine light from my heart and i give genuine help when i can and you know twin flames can be earth angels to do with their mission because they are raising up consciousness and helping people to align i hope that helps Okay, what work do we need to do as a divine feminine? We need to let go. We need to let go. We need to surrender. We need to allow the masculine to do their work. We need to give them the space. That's it. That's all they say. They say it's a journey with the feminines of surrender, patience, letting go, working on your own mission, self-love, self-worth, self-healing. But ultimately, the work you need to do as a divine feminine, is to let go and surrender on this journey. And then everything else follows suit. Everything else falls into place. Let's do a card about that. What work do we need to do as a divine feminine? The angels are saying most divine feminines are light workers anyway. 
they are already on their mission wow let's look at this what do we need what work do we need to do as a divine feminine we need to listen to our intuitive feelings listen to our intuitive feelings and beautiful there is in that card you know she's a feminine there she's got the angels with her there's a rainbow there she's protected by angels she's love she's purity she's light she's smiling she is powerful she is strong she's a warrior that's what you need to do as a divine feminine be a warrior of light it says your body is receiving accurate messages from the divine so you'll be feeling it within you so the angels are saying listen to what resonates with you you'll feel it in your physical body and that's how you'll know what work you need to do as a divine feminine that's amazing thank you right this is interesting what of waves second wave third wave blah blah okay now there's plenty out there about this i take no notice i ask the angels what of waves angels the angels say waves is a man-made illusion okay the angels are saying that and i'm telling you what they are telling me is the truth and what i believe to be my truth take what resonates with you okay take what resonates with you it's your journey but the angels are saying waves is a man-made way of looking at it it's a man way man-made way of being able to justify why things aren't happening right now and the angels are saying that you know waves are they're saying it's waves as in what people say is that a certain wave you were born into a certain wave at the certain time you came down blah blah and the angels are saying no it's everybody's journey is unique you can't list yourself or put yourself into a category on this journey because how you learn and grow and evolve and how your masculine learns and, learns and grows and evolves is different and unique to your journey. It's not connected with anybody else. So how could you possibly put yourself into a category with anybody else? And that's the truth. So the angels say waves is a man-made way of looking at it. It's illusion. It's hogwash. Okay, it's hogwash. Thank you. Okay, how do you clear up solar plexus energy, especially around the belly button or enhance your solar plexus energy? This is fascinating because we've just done a video about tuning in with um, star seeds and aliens. And obviously that's not my forte, but that came up to do with the, the you know, I'm sure it was the solar plexus or something like that that came up, so, you know, call on the angels, the angels are saying, ask Archangel Raphael to bring healing in, ask Archangel Metatron to cleanse your chakras, so how do you enhance your solar plexus, the angels are saying, clean up your vibration, ask the angels to come in and really clean it up, to polish it up, to allow everything to shine right, you know, to shine right, and do work, the angels are saying, also, feed yourself right things into your belly area. So because your belly area is connected with your stomach area, make sure you're putting good food in there. Make sure you're not putting any, any rubbish in there. You know, the angels say, think about your diet. Think about your physical health and what you're putting in there. And that's the way they're answering the question. So I hope that helps. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to, how many more questions have we got? We've got probably another video to do here. So we're going to do another video um, and, you know, I hope this is helping. It's inspiring me. I find it fascinating and thank you so much for bearing with me if I've got a bit of a croaky voice. But wow, aren't these angels amazing how they answer our questions? Have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.